Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. I can do the, the fly a plane. I don't know any of the other lyrics to that song uh, because that song is an artifact from when flying was cool and planes were jazz bars. Today, flying is yet another bummer of a transportation system that you have to sit through, staring at your phone, even when that staring could kill you. We're boring ourselves to death. We need a next technological leap that'll make going places awesome again. And that leap is coming. The problem is the designers of our next human travel experience don't seem to have ever met a human. Today's airline seating brings out the worst in us. Actually, worst is the wrong word. That implies airline seats give us the energy to do anything other than sit, fart, and slam our seat back into a stranger's sternum. But expect a higher chair mark on your upper body soon. Because Boeing's fitting more people onto their new planes with the novel strategy of putting the seats closer together. That's it? That's what you got? Of course there are more creative cabin space solutions than that, because this is the future. And those solutions are horrifying because the future is horrifying, and you would know that if you read books. Airbus patented this design that asked the question, what if airline seats didn't involve sitting? So look forward to a cross-country flight where you'll stand around like an antsy paratrooper who has no parachute and just as much desire to jump out of a plane. And in other torture concepts, the world's largest manufacturer of airline seats patented an interlocking seat design because nothing improves the most cramped flight you've ever been on as much as a stranger staring you in the face as your knee grazes their groin. Meanwhile on Earth, car drivers will soon be self-driving car passengers. Now, we've always wanted two things from cars, speed and safety. And the people behind self-driving cars will give us so much more of neither of those things. As far as speed goes, current prototypes of self-driving car systems operate as a linked network, sort of like trains. And in case you've never heard of trains, they're a transportation method so slow and infuriating, most people believe the myth that Italy saw fascism as a price worth paying for less awful rail. Simulations suggest that a network of smooth, train-like robo-cars will get you places slower than uh, uh, analog driving, let's call it. Also, those simulations don't account for any delay due to pedestrians crossing streets, even though it's not like you can just eliminate people from a... Well, I, I mean, you can eliminate some, uh, but I mean, like, you know better, right? If you don't, cannot recommend books enough. Anyway, your automated road box might be sluggish, but at least it's unsafe, because according to the excellent design podcast, 99% Invisible, self-driving car designers struggle with the question of adding a manual override option. Somehow those designers, who I am told are not sentient robots, think we'll enjoy feeling like Johnny Cab passengers, even when we want to change lanes quicker, or avoid a system error that's putting us in harm's way, or use the custom Fury Road steering wheel we ordered from Etsy that hasn't even come yet. It's gonna be so shiny and chrome! Planes and cars are the Pepsi and Coke of transit. If you're using any alternative to them, it feels weird, and you're probably trying to save money. The problem is, just like an ice-cold can of corporal bubbles or mountain spew, no one likes trains. Not even engineers. Decades of new train development are a tale of brilliant designers realizing the non-flat parts of Earth limit train speed to... train speed. The, the speed trains go. The next step for trains is Elon Musk's Hyperloop Maglev train, speeding us across California in tiny windowless capsules with no standing room and no apparent restroom. That's right, the greatest mind in future travel thinks you want to spend 30 solid minutes lying in a bullet coffin, peeing in bottles. Hey there, bus riders. Your next stop is the future, because the government is giving city buses some pretty advanced tech, specifically surveillance tech for, for spying on you. The Department of Homeland Security's cameras and facial recognition software are some designer's answer to your wish that bus rides could somehow involve more weird stares from strangers. And hey there, hashtag teens. The electronic skateboard is your next radical ride. A ride hackers can remotely take over to toss the rider off for fun. It's like, who could have known skateboarders are mischievous? They're real scamps. Let's face it, transportation designers are like John Hammond's velociraptors. They, uh, find a way to ruin everything. But let's, let's end on a positive. At least the latest bicycle designs are bicycles. No horrible new changes to a, a groin-centered metal frame with two flimsy wheels and a nightmare seat. So if you'll excuse me, I'll be riding the one form of transit I can trust, all the way across the city of Los Angeles, California, to
Guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and like and be a friend. Also, comment about how you're going to get around when all of these horrible things happen. Uh, will you be teleporting? Very exciting. Will you be walking? Uh, do you still have that Razor scooter? Do you, do you still have two Razor scooters? I could use one.